Hi there guys, I'm Nikhil from Grady Tech and in this video, I'll be showing you all the best features of the Motorola Edge 30. By the way, I've already posted a dedicated video for the tips and tricks section where I've talked about many things which I won't be covering in this video. So definitely check out that video as well, link will be in the description. With that said, the most highlighting feature about this phone would be its performance. This phone sports India's first Snapdragon 778G Plus 5G processor with 13 5G bands. It comes with up to 8GB of LPDDR5 RAM and with 128GB of storage. These are the benchmark scores. Purely in terms of performance, it is definitely one of the best phones in this price segment, especially with all the combinations that Moto offers. It's great for gaming and for normal usage as well. Next best thing about this phone would be its display. This phone has a massive 6.5 inch OLED display with Full HD Plus resolution, 144Hz screen refresh rate and it's protected by Corning Gorilla Glass 3. This phone actually has 144Hz screen refresh rate which is something we rarely see in phones in this price segment. So if you're someone who loves to play a lot of games on this phone then you'll really appreciate it. Next best thing about this phone would be its talk Android experience. Well, Moto has been known for its talk Android experience for a long time and the same thing applies even now. It comes with Android 12 right out of the box with April security patch, at least at the time I got it. Most of the UI is pretty much talk Android with some additional perks and gestures from Moto. If you're someone who loves vanilla Android, then this is one of the best options that you got. Next, this one also has some pretty impressive charging speeds. This phone supports turbo charging and also comes with a 33 watt turbo power charger inside the box. Considering the decently large 4000 mAh battery this phone has, charging speeds are gonna be pretty fast. Next, this phone also has some pretty impressive cameras. On the rear, it's got a triple camera setup with a 50 megapixel primary camera with f1.8 aperture and optical image stabilization. For selfies, we get a 32 megapixel camera with f2.4 aperture. These are some sample shots. Next, this phone also comes with a pretty impressive wide-angle camera. Moto has actually used a 50 megapixel ultra wide-angle camera with f2.2 aperture. These are some sample shots. Next, we also have the macro mode on this phone. Moto actually uses a dedicated 2 megapixel camera for that. And these are some sample shots. Next, we have a camera feature called as night vision. Now, this is just like night mode on any other Android phone out there, which can drastically improve pictures, which are taken in low lighting conditions. These are some sample shots. Next best thing about this phone would be its water resistance. This phone actually has IP52 water resistance, so your phone can definitely withstand some light splashes and even light rain. Besides that, it also got water repellent coating, which adds to additional protection. Next, we have media controls. Now, once you enable this feature to go to the next or previous track, when the screen is turned off, you can just press and hold on the volume buttons, whether it's volume up or down, to switch to the next or previous track. Next, we have lift to unlock. Now, once you enable this feature, you just need to pick up your phone and look at the screen to unlock the phone. Next, we can also change the screen refresh rate of this phone. We have three different options, auto, 60 and 144. By default, it is set to auto, where your phone will automatically change the screen refresh rate of your phone, depending upon what you're doing. For some reason, if you want to get a consistent experience or if you just want to go back to 60 Hz screen refresh rate, you can do all that from here. Next, this phone also has Dolby Audio. Dolby Audio is always on for the speaker and for the earphones, you can turn it off or turn it on. And the quality difference when you listen to audio when Dolby is on is significantly different when the Dolby is turned off. So if you're someone who listens to a lot of music, then you will definitely appreciate this feature as well. Next, let's look at all the camera related features. First, we have the portrait mode. Just like any other portrait modes on other phones, we can take a portrait shot using this feature and we can also change the blur intensity before we take a picture. Next, we have selective focus. Once we are in the portrait mode, 
you can change the focus point before taking a picture. And even after taking a picture, you can also change the focus point. Not only that, we can also change the amount of background blur effect you want by using this aperture control. Next, we have a new feature called Cinema Graph. In this, we can record a video. And once you're done, using the tools, you can keep a part of the video in motion while the rest freezes up. This is the effect that we get. Next, we have Spot Color. In this mode, you can see a point in the middle. You can just drag it to whichever color you want in the preview. Now, once you take a picture, only that color will be in color and the rest of the image will be in black and white. You just get a completely different look with this feature. Next, we have Dual Capture. Now, just like the name suggests, using this feature, we can take pictures from both the front and rear cameras at the same time. Well, there are different ways we can do it. One is the side-by-side -side, and the other one is the overlap. And in the overlap position, we can switch between the front and rear cameras once again and also switch between the primary camera and the wide-angle camera. These are some sample shots. Next, we also have slow motion video recording on this phone. And here's a quick sample footage. Next, we have gesture navigations. Now, these are the navigation gestures that you can find on almost all the Android phones these days. And once you enable them, you can just swipe from the bottom of the screen to go home, swipe and hold for recent apps, and then you can swipe from the left corner or the right corner to go back a step. To trigger Google Assistant, you can swipe from the bottom left corner or bottom right corner diagonally, and it will trigger Google Assistant. Finally, you can also swipe left or right on the bottom bar to quickly switch between the recent applications. Next, this phone also has the dark theme. You can enable it directly from the notification area or the display settings. And once you enable it, all the system UI elements change to the dark theme. That includes talk applications and even some Google applications. Even some of the third-party applications automatically switch to the dark theme once you turn on the dark theme. Here's a quick preview. Next, we have Moto app, where you can find all the additional Moto has to offer just in a single place. With that said, first we have the personalization section, which has to do with the look and the theme of the phone. In styles, we have different options, where we can change the icon shapes, colors, and even the font styles. If you're not satisfied with any of these options, you can also go with a the customized theme. Next, we have the wallpaper section, and from here you can easily change your wallpapers. We also have the layout section, where you can change the layout of your home screen. That's to say, the number of icons that you can see on the home screen can be changed directly from here. Next, we have the display related features, starting off with peak display. This used to be a flagship feature for the motor phones, but now it's also available on this phone. Now, once you enable this feature, when your device is locked, you get to see interactive notifications and some quick information. You can briefly check out the time and notifications, battery percentage, and whenever you get a notification, you can dismiss it and do a quick reply or completely remove it. You get to do different kinds of interactions with different notifications directly from the lock screen. So that's peak display for you. Next, we have attentive display. Now, this is a pretty cool feature. While you're setting it up, you just have to look at the screen until it reads your face. And once it's done, as long as you're using your phone, your phone display will not turn off. Let's say you're reading some article and just holding your phone for say 30 seconds or more. In normal cases, your display might turn off. But once you enable this feature, your display will still stay on. So that's attentive display for you. Next, we have Moto Game Time or just a toolkit for games. From here, you can just add the list of games on your phone. And once you're done, whenever you open any of these games, you can see a floating button on the screen. And once you click it, you get some extra options to block calls, block notifications, take a screenshot, do a screen recording, and even select some applications for floating apps. For example, we have Facebook over here. And with just a click of a button, I can use Facebook while playing the game. This is another new feature on this phone. Next, we have media control. Now let's look at some moto actions. First, we have quick capture. Now, once you enable this feature, you can just do a twist gesture on your phone to open the camera application. No matter what you're doing, just twist your phone to open the camera application. Now, once the camera application is open, 
Once again, you can do a twist gesture to quickly switch between the front camera and the rear camera. Next, we have Fast Torch. Now, once you enable this feature, you can just do a chopping gesture with your phone twice to turn on the flash. You can do it again to turn it off. Next, we have Open Camera Quickly. Now, once you enable this feature, you can just press the power button twice to quickly open the camera application. Once again, this feature works anywhere, anytime. Next, we have Flip for Do Not Disturb Mode. Once you enable this feature, you can just flip your phone to put your phone in Do Not Disturb Mode. Next, we have Pick Up to Silence. Once you enable this feature, whenever you get a call, you can just pick up your phone to silence the ringtone. This particular feature is pretty handy. Next, we have Lift to Unlock. Just like the name suggests, you can unlock your device by picking it up and just looking at the screen. Next, we have the three finger screenshot gesture. Before that, let me just show you how to take a regular screenshot. So to take a screenshot, just press and hold the volume down and power button both at the same time and you'll get a screenshot. Now, as for the three finger screenshot gesture, once you enable it, just press and hold three fingers on the screen to take a screenshot. After you take a screenshot, you get a preview with some additional options to edit, share the image or even do an image search. Next, we have Digital Wellbeing. Now, this is part of Google's program and it just records all your activities on your phone and gives you a complete analysis. Like which are the apps that you use most on your phone and which apps are taking up most of your time. It gives you a complete analysis and some parental controls if you really need them. Next, we have Bedtime Mode. This is another feature from Google which will silence your phone and change the screen to black and white at bedtime. You can schedule this feature to automatically turn on based on time or when the phone is charging. Next, we have Captions. Now, once you enable this feature, whenever you are watching a video on your phone, you can get live captions. Now, this has nothing to do with the video. Your phone will directly translate the audio from the video and convert it to text and give you a caption. Once again, this is a pretty cool feature. Next, we have Power Button and Calls. Now, once you enable this feature, you can end the call with just the power button. Just click it when the display is on to end the call. Next, we have Night Light. This is just another name for the night mode or the reading mode. Once you turn on this feature, it'll just put a warm tint on the screen to reduce the blue light emitted by the display. You can also schedule it to automatically turn on and turn off at a specific time. Next, we have Swipe to Split. This is another new feature from Moto to open split screen mode just by using a gesture. Once you turn on this feature, swipe your finger from the left edge of the screen to the right edge back again to open the split screen mode. Current application will be opened in the top window and you can select the secondary application from the recent apps or the app drawer. Well, another way to open split screen mode is go to recent apps page, click on the app icon and select split screen mode. Personally, I think the gesture works really well. Next, we have Prevent Ringing. Now, this is a quick shortcut to enable vibration mode or the mute mode. Once you enable this feature, you just need to press the power button and volume up button together to trigger the vibrate mode or the mute mode. From the settings, you can select the default option. So guys, these are all the features on your Moto phone. If I missed out on anything important, do let me know by commenting below this video. With that said, this is Nikhil signing off. See you in my next video.